sun is shining, my heart is singing, and today I am on Exmoor National Park. I could not be happier about the weather and just about the journey that we're undertaking today. We've got 13 miles, so we're gonna do a little loop basically around Countersbury Head. We're gonna drop down into Linton and Linworth, have a little look around there, a place I absolutely cherish, and then we'll work our way back up this path, actually, rather interestingly, which joins the East Lynn River further down the valley. So we'll climb back along the river, up along here, back to the car park. This is Countergate Car Park. It's free, there's toilets, everything a walker needs, including, I've <laughs> already shown you, but I'm gonna show you again, this rather fantastic view. <laughs> so we'll be walking back into that a bit later on today. Uh, I've just got to finish a few things and then we'll head on out. <laughs> Have a look in the little shelter and as always we have a rather wonderful map so we are here so this is the plan people we're gonna go do 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 fallen point do 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 linmouth and if i'm hungry i might stop at my most favorites pub and have my most favorites cream tea and then we're gonna walk uh along the east Lynn river all the way all the way all the way to brendan I often start walks there. It's a nice little route down the down the river. We're going down to the river. Right, no. Um, then basically we'll climb up and up and up and up and up back to Countergate Car Park along the path that we could see from the car park. Let's go. So turning off the road, heading this way. So it's a good sign when the sign matches your intention so sister's fountain is a little spring we'll go and have a look at and then we'll join the coaster path and we'll follow that for many miles until we get to linden it's a pretty big gate isn't it the route steadily descended along clear paths through deciduous woodland that stirred with signs of spring and seemed inspired by the clear skies and emerging views so it's a good sign when the first little descent, you're just like cringing in pain from your knee. <laughs> uh, so last summer I was doing the coast to coast trail. So walk across the country and basically I went over a stile and the stile broke uh, underneath the weight of me and my rucksack and like my whole leg just jammed into the ground. And then three weeks ago, I fell off my bike. I came off in the strong winds and like skidded beautifully for about a hundred meters <laughs> and tore my knee open. <laughs> Um, but it's just jarred it even more and so it's really not great at sort of bearing weight but oh well I just forgot the knee support okay so the fountain thing is down there but that stick has my name on it I left my stick in the car so <laughs> I'm just gonna tempt fate and try not to die this is gonna help my knees, isn't it? Huh, self-care, 101. How not to look after yourself. There you go. Hello, stick. Whoa. Do you fancy joining me today on a rather lovely yomp through the countryside? Oh, okay, you broke. I take that as a no then. <sighs> okay, well, we may as well just carry on down, don't we, really? Let's just... Oh, maybe not. Maybe that's not the sensiblest thing I've ever come up with. Um, okay, okay, brief pause, <laughs> engage rational mind, to up or down, to up. <laughs> this is the problem with having a dodgy knee, you can't be as like mountain goatish as normal. Okay, so gravity's saying I'm going down, so I'm going down, dude, I'm not even like, <laughs> oh, do you know what, I'm just gonna, let's just, proper Abbey style, here you go, look, it's fine having some rocks up my butt. I don't really mind that too much. Pad works. Whoa. I'm destroying the national park. Should be banned for all eternity. Um, right. There we go. Look at me. I'm surviving. I'm a survivor. I think that's how that song goes. Hmm. This is a great start to the walk, you know? <laughs> Just, yeah. Three, two, one. Uh, ah, sharp rambles. <laughs> okay, we're down. 
never to return. And this is the Sisters Fountain. The Sisters Fountain is an early 19th century stone structure with a stone cross on top, marking a spring that feeds into an oval shaped pool below. It's built using rubble sourced locally and is a peaceful spot that catches the light beautifully. And just like that then, we are within this most beautiful ancient woodland, looking over the dramatic coastal landscape. Oh, this is Exmoor at its best. So we're just going to follow the southwest coastal path, which we are now on, which just so happens to be a long distance route that travels for 620 miles all the way around the southwest coast. Uh, thankfully, we're not walking quite that far today, but we're just going to follow its undulating trail all the way to Linton and Lynmouth. Six miles. Let's get moving. <laughs> wow, look at that. Cool little cottage. It is unbelievably wonderful to be out right now. I'm kind of relishing the shade, this coolness underneath the trees, because I know we're going to get a little bit more exposed to the blazing light once we get out onto the cliffs, but oh, I can't tell you how much it means to me to be out here today. Uh, for anyone who follows my newsletters or my social media pages, you'll know that the last six months have been incredibly challenging with regards to looking after my self in relation to my mental ill health. I just haven't been able to get out. I've already done a cumulatively like three proper day walks. Um, I have been walking every single day and that's a video I actually want to make at a different time called why I walk every day. Um, but I've just been like aching to get out and I'm excited as much as I am nervous because it's such a fine balance being out on your own when often you're not able to keep yourself very safe but then i'm craving solitude and time outside and actually i'm so thankful it's weather like this um this actually helped me decide that yeah i'm gonna just come out for a few days because it's just one less thing for me to have to worry about i can just come out and walk and i don't need to be like okay the mist's in what's the coast gonna be like can i make rational decisions in the mist on the coast so um it's just beautiful, you know, the birds are singing. I can't hear any man-made noises. And that for me is a relief. I'm very sensitive to noise and external stresses. So to just have this, it just speaks to me. <sighs> yeah, I'm glad to be out, man. So I've got a long way to walk, uh, especially since I didn't set out till just after half 12 um, because I had some errands to run this morning. Just want to tidy everything up, but I'm in Exmoor for three days. So I've got two nights of camping. I'm going to stay down at Cloud Farm, lovely little place right in the valley. Um, and I'm just going to chill out, obviously, make sure I'm filming the days. So we've got three walks, but that's it, man. <laughs> my time's my own. I can just reconnect with nature and find a stick. <laughs> oh, it feels good to feel happy. A little bit emotional, but it's okay. Emotion's good. What's this then? It looks like the remains of another spring. So the water potentially would have come down there. Or it's a seat. Though the forest was free from man-made noise, it was abundant in natural sounds instead. The birds sang blissfully in the trees, cheering me on, and the streams with the waterfalls bubbled and frothed, beckoning me in to enjoy their cool waters. I felt electrocuted with life, all of my senses finely tuned into the lands that I felt I belonged. I just wanted to show you this. So we've got here some wooden enemies that are looking a little fried actually, but they're just beautiful little white flowers with these deep purple veins that pop up this time of year. And then we head over here 
just a little further up, we've got the beginning of a foxglove coming through. Then we've got these common dog violets. Look at that, lovely. And then right here, we've got lesser celandines, golden flowers bursting through. Find them everywhere and they're just incredible. So literally, <laughs> one meter space, we've got four different flower species here. Just gotta take the time to notice them. Occasionally, the path would open up for short stretches, with the edges decorated with the vibrant yellows of gorse bushes, before once again plunging back into the ancient woodlands with its gnarled up trees and dusty roots. Just gonna grab some silver birch bark as my tinder for tonight. There's lots of silver birch, which is this type of tree here. You can see how silvery it is quite simply, and when it's dead, or well, the bark tends to sort of peel off and hopefully if I cut properly, I should, there we go, be able to peel off bits like that. So this is full of natural oils that will catch a spark even when wet. So we'll just gather up a little bit. It's not as flaky as I'd like to be honest. I'm sure there'll be plenty more about. Here we go, entering into the Glen Thorn Cliffs, owned by the National Trust. And then we'll hit Fallen Point and skirt on around that. Doesn't look, that look like some kind of portal into another world? <laughs> Crawl through there and you get into Avatar Land. I joked about that tree stump earlier being some kind of entrance to another world, but seriously, this landscape, when you're in this forest, you just feel back in historical England. You could be in prehistory, just roaming through the woods, waiting to find a deer, or, you know, seeing what plants you can find that you can harvest. It's an incredible, timeless feeling being here. And there is Fallen Point, finally. <laughs> so you have the option basically to go around the edge or take a path that basically just stays inland and sort of cuts it off. So we're gonna stay inland today because I think the edge is just a little road anyway. So we don't want road walking today. Ooh, what's that? Oh, an honesty box. Cool, man. Cup of tea, anyone? Oh, many goodies. Oh. <laughs> Even fresh fruit. Now, these are cool people. Please give it your gosh, no. Oh, nice little book. Oh, I like that book. Cool. Oh, wow. I've got to write in it. Is there a pen? There it is. It's exciting. Four plastic tub with the blue lid. This one. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Sorted. Proceeds go towards feeding the woodland black birds. Oh, that's great. I didn't actually stop at that little honesty box, but it's just so great to stumble upon them. I'm so enthusiastic about people that think about as walkers and <laughs> offer free supplies or supplies just asking for a donation. So that particular site they gave donation to feeding the wild birds, which is lovely. <laughs> Can't help but smile. Anyway, we are on Fallen Point now. And check out this rather dramatic landscape. Not bad at all. Fallen Point sits as the most northerly outcrop on the Devon and Exmoor coast. The lighthouse, which was completed in the 1900s, sits neatly on its cliffs flashing every 15 seconds to catch the attention of passing ships. It's kind of hilarious looking at these gigantic cliffs ahead of us, because it's like we're dropping down to sea level right now. <laughs> We've got to go all the way back up. What fun. <laughs> As predicted, we've got to get up there. And hopefully this path will take us to it. You can see that sign there says lighthouse. I'm not actually going to go to the lighthouse today, but if you wanted to do that, you just head down the road and you can follow round 
We're just gonna crack on along the coastal path. There are many, many steps. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It is an utterly indescribable feeling being out here today. Just having to settle back into my pace. I'm surprised at how quickly it's come back, to be honest. Sort of knowing what sort of speed to push at with different gradients. Feels wonderful to have my heart rate up and just soaking in everything about this land. Oh, I know it seems quite gentle in a way, placid maybe, but take one look at the shrubs around here and they'll be telling you a different story. Nothing is taller than I am, battered back by the wind and the rain through the changing seasons. This is indeed an exposed bit of land. I'm rather lucky to be able to wander through today so innocently. <laughs> As I climbed, I made sure to keep turning around and taking the views behind me towards Countersbury and beyond. It was a truly wonderful sight and I was so grateful for the clear weather. Though, unfortunately, it wasn't to last all that long. Ah, uh, okay. Because <sighs> that's not dramatic at all. <sighs> We've got <laughs> flip. We've got this sudden wall of sea mist that's just coming in, engulfing the land. It's trying to eat us up. <sighs> and everywhere else is blue sky. <sighs> what? <laughs> Whoa. Well, this is a rather dramatic turn in events. The sea mist, also known as a fret or ha, typically forms over the sea when warmer moist air moves over the cooled sea, causing the moisture in the air to condense, forming the ha, which is then blown inland by a breeze. I didn't feel at all threatened by the ha, instead curious and watched as it creeped inland, as though protectively covering the landscape around me. A little further on, I could just about make out the Church of St John, an 18th and 19th century rebuild of an earlier church that sits just above Countersbury. It kind of feels like such a shame the mist has come in now. We've only got about a mile and a half down to Linton and Lynmouth, and the views across the coast there are definitely some of my favourite on this stretch of walking. <laughs> so I'll have to leave it to your imagination, I'm afraid. For now, we see nothing. Check this out. We've got some concrete here in the ground. So this is probably the remains of an old machine gun station from the Second World War. There's another one just up there. And you can imagine what a location this would be to keep an eye out for invasions, planes and boats coming in. I mean, what a view. <laughs> in theory. Oh, cool, and here we go. This is probably the little hut that the guys would have stayed in when they're manning the machine guns. Hmm, home from home. <laughs> oh wow, apparently the snails like the ceiling. <laughs> Look at that, there's loads of them. <laughs> this is a road, we're following the road. <laughs> Uh, we don't have to walk on it, thankfully, we've got this little strip of path, but pretty soon we'll break away from it anyway and head down through the woods and we'll drop right down to the bay at Linton and Lymouth and I'll just have a little celebration moment when I get there because it's a very special place to me. Uh, the Two Moors Way finishes there and I did the walk last year and it was a very emotional moment to end up there and I also just lead a lot of walks that finish there as well or go through there and I just love it man it's got a great vibe so we'll take some time wandering around having a look at the cliff 
railway and other sites of interest and then we'll head up the East Lynn River. So I need to point this out because this plant has been bothering me <laughs> for a very long time. Um, it's been popping up all around my home. I didn't know what it was. My research apparently was not adequate enough to discover what it was. So I put it out to the world. And now, thanks to you guys, I know what this plant is. So you see this really vibrant looking greeny grassy stuff sort of lining the path. And what we've got here is one of the flowers that's popping out much later than near us actually. So it's, it's got white petals, one, two, three, four, five, six petals with a green stripe down the middle and this really waxy thin leaves. So this is three corned leek. And actually if you could smell what I can smell right now and if I just crush one of the leaves, sorry leaf. If I smell that, it smells like garlicky, oniony almost. It's very pungent. And I know what this plant is now. So I just had to share that with you. <laughs> wow, look, the cliffs are completely shrouded in mist. That's where we've just come from. <laughs> Seems like a real sun trap here. But it's beautiful, the light glistening off the water. Lynmouth straddles both the West and East Lynn rivers and is connected to Linton, some 700 feet above, by the famous Cliff Valley Railway, a water powered funicular railway built in the 1800s. The town became famous in 1952 when an immense storm caused the rivers to swell and a huge wave of water moved down the valley, destroying over 100 buildings in the village and killing 34 people. A memorial hall is dedicated to the disaster and contains photographs, newspaper cuttings, videos and more. The village is also home to the Exmoor National Park Centre. I popped in and chatted to the staff about different wildflowers we'd each seen on the trail. Another one, not as long today. <laughs> Every time I've visited, they've always been immensely friendly and knowledgeable, and I left feeling inspired. Definitely make sure to pop in if you're in the area and check out their events. They have all sorts, from learning how to find wild foods to riverside walks. There's something for everyone. With my research done, I headed in to the Ancient Mariner for my usual order. A homemade cream tea. Still the best I've ever had. Heading out from the town, I followed the East Lynn River, which is sourced near Malmsmead from two minor tributaries, the All Water and Bagworthy Water. It's a lovely walk as you move away from the houses and definitely want to be savoured. What are you doing? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm feeling amazingly fueled having scoffed that ginormous scone, but now we're leaving the village of Linton and Lynmouth behind and we're following the roaring East Lynn River. It is pretty spectacular today, I guess, because we're still just about in our winter season. So there's a lot of water running off the land to fill up this river and produce this fantastic sound. It really is very exhilarating. Both of these routes are spectacular. Normally I walk back along the riverside. I think I'll hit the woods today. I haven't walked back that way in a long time. Normally I walk down to Lynmouth that way. So through the woods we go. This is the slightly higher path. 
I changed my mind. Back to the river. <laughs> Creature of habit. <laughs> oh. All right, Riverside. Here we go. Wow, look at that light on the river. <laughs> that is amazing. We've already had a chat about the 1952 floods, but this is another place that was destroyed by them. This is a mineral water factory, or it was a mineral water factory. And what we've got here, this is what the, the beer bottle would have looked like. So they used to make beer from the water as well. And then what we've got here, here we go, that's what the place would have looked like. Hard to believe, huh? We're just approaching Waters Meat House, which is the old fishing lodge now owned by the National Trust. But we're crossing over this bridge and you see that waterfall there, or this whole stream of water. Basically, this is the tributary that adds on or joins the East Lynn River. And just a bit further up, this is joined by the Haw Oak Water, which the Two Moors Way follows. And it was simply the volume of water coming down through this river and this river that caused the mass flooding further down the valley in 1952. Waters Meat House dates to around 1832 and was built by Walter Stevenson Halliday, who also built the Manor House in the Glenthorne Estate. It now sits within a 348 hectare site of special scientific interest, much of which is managed by the National Trust. See all these bushes here? These are bilberry and some of them have even got little red flowers indicating they're going to have fruits later in the season. You can see they've been doing some coppicing around here. I just spent 10 minutes trying to get this specific piece of wood from one of the piles. It is actually alive but I, I keep looking at others, it's not good really. This is my stick now. It's a bit tall. When I get back to camp, I'll shave it down. I've got my saw with me actually. Not on me, but with me. Uh, so we'll cut it down to size and this will be my new walking stick for Exmoor. Very happy. Whoa, obviously had a big tree down here. Check this out, bit of a mess. You can see the rocks down there, how smooth they are. The water's just worn them away over the years. What power. Okay, I can't just walk by that and not give it a go. <laughs> Here we go. This is probably going to go horribly wrong. But at least it will be on camera, right? Okay, 
Yeah, he's not spinning, I'm gonna throw it out. Oh. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Um, dismount. Uh. 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 One with the watch. Someone is definitely cooking pasta in Rockford. Yep, that's where we are. Little hamlet of Rockford and just a mile or so on is Brendan. And that's the point where we leave the river and we climb back up to the car park. Cool place to live, huh? Hmm, once again, things have taken a turn. My route up through the valley <laughs> appears to be on fire. I don't know whether it's swaling or whether it's accidental slash intentional, uh, but it's right over the footpath. I can see it from here. The smoke is filling the sky. It's going right over the valley. So <laughs> I was just chatting to a lovely man who was helping me figure out the route. If I was gonna sort of head down towards Malmsmead, that I mean that's just another like five miles back to the car park. So rather than risk my life, since I'm here to try to encourage me to live my life, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to follow a little road up if I can, um, up to the main road and then follow the main road back to the car. <sighs> that was very unexpected. <laughs> So this is Brendan anyway, little hamlet that combines with Leaford, truly beautiful place. And actually often I park here when I'm doing walks on Exmoor. But obviously today we've got to head back up to County Gate. However, we're gonna do that. Um, so I'm feeling a little bit tired. Sun's definitely setting, it's gone past six o'clock now. So it's a shame I have to reroute, but at least the main road should be quieter. If we can get to the main road, if not, uh, I might be a bit screwed. <laughs> there, see, that's the route I would have taken, but the fire is also just up there. So we're going to go down, or up even, this very steep road, which I think is called Church Hill Road. But don't quote me on that. I just remember my sat now telling me that once. <laughs> oh, okay. Big climb. Let's do it. fire is literally just down there and you can see how the sky up there is orange from the smoke compared to the sky here which is blue hang on a minute just take a moment to go wow wow To be completely honest, I think it's worse driving this hill than walking it. Not too bad at all. Ah, oh, stunning evening. Absolutely stunning. So we're on the road. I'm making the most terrible progress forwards because I keep stopping. So look at that. Oh, what colour. <laughs> Every time I look, my jaw just like falls to the floor and I have to scoop it back up in order to keep walking. Uh, right, I don't know how big the fire is. I don't know if my car is alive. I don't know when I'm going to get to the car park. But I'm just going to walk until I get there and reflect on the day, on the journey. A very successful walk with some rather unexpected occurrences and a rather lovely scone actually that was good so thank you very much for following my journey today it's been wonderful to share it with you very thankful for technology to be able to capture this and bring it to your screen wherever you are i hope it inspired you to don your walking boots to head outside and to spend more time in the wild and so folks until next time enjoy those adventures and stay wild